We were hurting. But God healed us. We were broken. But God saw fit to put us back together. Today we're walking together in our purpose. And now we teach other couples how to do the same. I'm Gerald Benton. And I'm Yvette Benton. And And this this is Fiery Topics Topics in Marriage. Well, hello, hello, hello. It's Fiery Topics in Marriage. So good to have you on with us tonight. Of course, we have a fiery topic. Of course, we have a fiery topic and we're excited about it. We hope you all love our new intro. We get excited about things that God is doing, not only in our life, but in our marriage. Everything about And then our ministry and everything that God is doing. We are thrilled about it and we celebrate him. God said, be faithful over the little things and he will make you over much. There you go. So let's Ooh, be faithful over some little things. So speaking about that, being ruler over much, literally being faithful over some little things, that actually goes with our fiery topic today. Mm-hmm. So our fiery topic today is believing God for your spouse's deliverance. Believing God for your spouse's deliverance. So let's just say um, together, let's just make sure that we are remain very respectful, that we remain um, respectful in all the things that God has asked of us so that we are not putting things in the comments that are inappropriate or putting things in comments that would be disrespectful. How would you know whether something would be disrespectful? If the person is not looked at favorably by your comment, then it's probably not respectful. If if they saw the comment and would be like, why would you tell people I did that? Or why would you say that I did this? Then it's probably inappropriate, right? So we can talk about our own responses but to put something uh, out that would hinder the the fact that we are called to respect and honor our spouses would be bad, right? Yes, it would be. Is that a good de- description yeah. of it? Yeah, oh. it's just a precursor to, to well, the topic <laughs> because he was like, okay, we have to have a do something for that because you'll have to do that one every you know, every week. Yeah. Every time we do it. Yeah. But this one, this topic lends to it even a little bit more. Oh, so that's why we, that's why you're saying that. Even more because of this particular topic. I was like, this is, this kind of new that you, only when it's a a topic or after we started, then you will usually say that. Yeah. So so I know this topic about to be fired (laughs) because you had to say that. Oh, this topic is about to be lit. I'm already hot. I'm like, really? I'm hot. You are? Uh, No. (laughs) I'm hot. But when you think about your spouse's deliverance, sometimes your question is, oh, I've been wanting to know, how do I help my spouse get off drugs? See, we can say stuff like that because we have each other's permission to talk openly. But here's the deal. If you put that in the comments, then somebody knows your spouse is on drugs. So it's not appropriate. Now you can ask a question like, how do I forgive over and over? Or how do I learn to let things go that hurt me? That's different because that's on you, but it doesn't say anything. So hopefully that helps. But I just, I wanted to say that because um, sometimes people see the word deliverance and just air out. And I get it. I was in that situation. And sometimes you don't know who to talk to, who to ask. And when you know someone has been through it, oh, let me just ask them anything. And that really isn't the way to be honorable. Mm -hmm. And so we never want the enemy to have a way in. Like the, the very thing you're trying to do to do a good thing, 
could then turn around and end up being the very thing that opens the door for the enemy because wait a minute, you're trying to do something biblical in a non-biblical way. That does not allow God in. So, so that becomes such a big deal because we want to remain honorable, holy, and righteous. And righteous because the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous, righteous avails, avails much. much. And you don't want anything hindering your prayers. So let's just that throw that part. out there. We don't want anything hindering your prayers. So we just took literally five minutes to talk about. But that actually can be a way to help someone through their deliverance is learning how to be honorable within a situation that could seem dishonorable. So maybe wow. we start there. There you go. Let's we go. start there. When a person, specifically your spouse, is dealing with something difficult, let's first remember we're probably dealing with something as well. Pause on that. Especially if you're uh, dealing with a person that is dealing with something. You deal, you're going to end up dealing with something. You're just going to deal with something, period. Period. Cause yeah, because we're not perfect. Right. So God had to show me he doesn't have big sins and little sins. We do. Like the world comes up with these big time sins and these little sins. And God was like, I don't do things like that. I it, sin is sin. If it doesn't smell good in my nostrils, it doesn't smell good in my nostrils. If it's outside of my word and my will, it's outside of my word and my will. So he had to help me out. I was bringing what I thought were the big things. But did you see? Did you know? Do you think? And he was like, well, what about? And then about? And then about? And I was like, but that is not anything like his sin. And God was really? not even feeling that. He, he, he didn't even have. He has no meter, right? So if you're truly going to understand this topic, you got to take away the meter. I mean, everybody's always, we've always look, be able to look at someone else. Wow. And judge where they are than judging ourselves. It's really, it's really, um, it's really hard to, to, because you don't look at yourself all the time, but you're looking at someone else all the time. Yes. And so if we internalize, started looking at ourselves and allowing us, allowing God to work through us as an individual to be able to help yes. even the cause of what you're looking at, Definitely. you know, it's if we can walk outside and 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 look at what society or whatever and we feel like we can pray for them and and we can help them but the help begins in the house yeah the Ministry. very one that you look at every day the very one that you have a conversation with every day the very one and it's it it takes practice it takes work it takes uh um patience it takes it takes all of jesus every, everything every, that every jesus bit. is every and everything that jesus does has done that's what it takes so for me when when i started working toward my husband's deliverance i had to first and this is why we're we're really here because we kind of touched on it on a on a previous fiery topics and people were like we need more on that i had to realize i wasn't as spiritually mature as i thought i was that part. i had put myself <laughs> in the very mature ca category because I went to church a lot, because I knew scripture a lot. Really? But when God started asking me to do things to assist in his deliverance, first I was like, no. And then I had to realize, okay, you can literally hear God ask you to do something and then just blatantly say no. Like you, that should not be that easy. It should not be so easy to just say, no. not doing it. No. I'm not doing it, just disobedient. So that that was one thing. I really had to understand that. So I saw myself differently. And then when God asked me to forgive over and over, I was like, nope, doesn't deserve it. Then when God told me I wasn't loving unconditionally, because every time I brought something up, he said, well, that's a condition. Well, this is a condition. <laughs> then... I, and I can be transparent, some people may not admit this, but there was a time I just said, I'm not praying at all because I don't want to hear what you have to say about him. 
Wow. I don't want to hear it. Every time I pray, you want me to forgive him. Every time I pray, you ask me, did I love him? Every time I pray, you said, give him a soft answer. It turns away wrath. I don't want to hear that. So I'm not praying. I'm not going to get in your presence. So if I get in the presence, uh, I'm going to feel your heart. I'm going to feel what you want. I'm going to feel your word. I'm going to get closer to you. So I was like, uh, for a while, I'm just not going to pray. Now, I didn't say that out loud. I I didn't really want to admit that that's what I was doing, but that's what I was doing. So I had to realize you're, you don't have a marriage problem. You got a faith problem. You, you don't have a marriage problem. You, you've got an obedience problem. You don't have a marriage problem. You've got a discipline problem. Like everything I was blaming on my marriage, I really was, I really could also at least consider you're disobedient. You're immature in Christ. You're, you are not following in the ways of God. So if I focus in on that and I started to learn the deliverance process, that was a huge reason I could become a, a vessel for God in deliverance. And that was important. That, that, that part of understanding how, what God is intending for us to be mm -hmm. and to do is really important for someone to be able to see that there's a support system. There's help. Mm -hmm. There's there's really help being a person that needs to be have to have to go through a lot of deliverance. You just feel like nobody can really and truly help you mm. because you get into a, a, a depressed place. You get into a helpless place. You and, and when you think that you can be delivered or, you know, going through my delivering process one time, I'm delivered and then I'm good. I'm good. I'm good for, you know, a month. And all of a sudden now I'm it's worse than it, it, it was before. And so going through that process over and over and you having to see it and be like, I'm tired of this. This is this is getting weary. I'm not doing this. It's, it's what it is. And then as you got to the place where you got stronger, yes, you got more committed to I'm going to do this for God. Because God is asking me to do this. God is asking me to pray. God is asking me to forgive. God is asking me... I, this is what the Bible tells us that we should do. And we read that all the time. But when it comes down to it, do we really, really want to do it? Because when you say it, you, you, you have a faith problem. You have a discipline problem. When you start saying all those things, that's word. You know, faith is a subset of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So because you haven't seen it, you're losing faith. You're losing hope. You're, you, you, you go, you're falling in, into despair. So you're just saying, I'm throwing my hands up. I don't want to deal with it. But the uh, but the person is sitting over there feeling like I want I don't want to be this. I don't mm -hmm. want to do this. I I feel like I cannot I, I can't take it. So what we, what what did I do? I ran. I left. I, if if I can't have help and she's tired and I'm making her frustrated and I'm doing I, I, I'm just not doing what she needs. I'm better off leaving. I'm better off being on my own and let me deal with it on my own. But that's not what God is intending for it to be. Right. It's God is intended for help to be there to be able to assist someone out of this dark place. He doesn't. He wants the soul. He wanted my soul. He didn't want me to. He didn't want to lose my soul to the enemy in death and drugs and and, and suicide and, and and drugs and perversion. He didn't want that. He wanted my soul, but he needed a vessel on earth to be able to help assist that. And so when you get into that place where you're looking at the situation like you did, and he started giving you faith problem, discipline problem, all of those things, when he's wanting to use you to literally help me and assist me in this walk, in this journey, because it wasn't going to be easy. Mm -mm. It wasn't going to be easy because what I was coming out of, right? I couldn't have done this by myself. I was, I would have tried to do it, but I kept the, the failure part of it and, be, and falling in failure all the time. It became tedious. You know, it, it's just like, the fight, it seemed like you you fought you in quicksand and you steady trying to pull yourself up out of quicksand and it's just hard and you needing a hand. 
You needed someone that's going to pray for you, somebody that's going to believe in you, somebody that's going to trust in you, somebody that you know that's going to be in your corner. But when 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 you get into a place where you feel like someone just is tired and you know they're tired, they're tired of doing it, even if they said it, but if they don't say it, you see it and it's a weariness. And so now it's a, a what do I do? Right. And so I want to be fair to people. When you say that, it actually sounds like you needed help. But what about the person who's helping that also needs need help? Help. They need help. Yep. So I always share, and we're transparent, and, and he gives me freedom to share. I, I'm, I'm going to ask for, for, for permission to disagree. Yeah. Okay. So I disagree. And I disagree because what about the person who needed to do what was needed to get the help? I say we all have the ability to do it. I yeah. That's just my opinion. To we say do. that we don't have the ability to do it. I am I would say God asks everybody to do it. Okay, I got you. Let me reframe this. Okay. Because I... Because of despair and failure, I just felt like I couldn't. But when I got to a place where I started understanding God is, a I'm able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm starting to understand the scripture and understanding that I could, I could, I can, and I will, and I could conquer. Now the, the, the strength of the boldness of I can come out of this, that I'm not going to just, I'm just going to not, I'm just not going to sink and die. Just right. not going to do that. I gave you enough. Someone had to give that to you. Yeah. And I gave that to you. Mm -hmm. But I can't agree that if no one gave it to you, you wouldn't be delivered because no one gave it to me. Right. So I have to. So I share from my perspective. I don't believe it has to be. I just believe God uses people. Right. So God has to have. A vessel, a vessel and God, but, but Holy Spirit can be the vessel, mm -hmm. right? So we have to realize God will tell us what we need to do and it's up to us to do it. But we can't be surprised mm -hmm. when God says, I need you to help that person because then we have to make a decision. Do we want to obey God? Right. So when we obey, that part. right, right. So when we obey God, God's going to open up and say, you know, this is what I need. It doesn't matter if someone's done something else because you still have to answer to God Period. for your choices, right? So he was going to have to answer to God for oh, his God. choices, but I was also going to have to answer to God for my choices. So from our perspective, hear it this way. If I heard God say, this is what I want you to do. And I stopped at the fact that it was excruciatingly hard. Right. It still was disobedience. Because mm -hmm. he asked you to. Because he asked me to. And because I knew that's what forgiveness, loving unconditionally, those aren't on the table to, to <laughs> those aren't even on the table to, to debate. They're not negotiable. They're not negotiable. <laughs> Love that. Non-negotiable. So God told me, even if he divorces you and walks out, right. I haven't changed my mind about what I asked you to do. So his behavior being demonic, let's just say it. We'll just say his behavior was following and listening to the stranger's voice. At that time, he wasn't listening to the strange. He was listening to the stranger's voice. He wasn't listening to God's voice. No. So he was listening to the stranger's voice. But guess who could hear God's voice? I still could. Even though it was challenging, God still was able to get through to me. That's God's job. <laughs> That's God's whole way of doing things. Can I get somebody to hear my voice and follow me? Can I get someone to be a sacrificial lamb? Can I get someone to represent me in, in this family, in this bloodline, in this church, in this territory. That's God's goal. 
So if everybody in the family, the bloodline, the marriage, the church, if everybody says, I heard you, but that's hard. I heard you, but that'll hurt me. I heard you, but that's difficult. I heard you, but I don't want to, I don't want to study that much. When does God win? So it didn't matter that his behavior was demonic because he was ready to divorce me. He was gone, left me out of the house. Never. I don't want to speak to you. Don't call me shutting it down. If I called him, he didn't answer. God said, it doesn't matter because I have asked you to do something. That doesn't mean it was easy. Let's just go to Jesus's walk to the cross. Do we think because it was excruciating, it wasn't God? Because we say this all the time. If we are Christians, little Christ, Christ like, Christ like, Christ is our example. We want to say we're Christians, but Christ's walk was excruciating. It was horrible. It was embarrassing. It was painful. But we would never, if you're a Christian, you would never say, oh, I don't think that was God. No, we know it was God. We know God asked him to do that. We know God asked him to sacrifice. We know God asked him to give up what was his. And he didn't even sin. So when God asks us to do something hard, we can't just say, because it's hard, I'm not doing it. Or because it's hard, I don't like it. Or because it's hard, it's not God, because that's what I did. Because it was so hard, I kept saying, well, that can't be God. Well, this can't be God. And so he kept bringing me to Jesus. I need a sacrifice. I need someone who will do what I'm asking, because that's how I pull people from hell. If I didn't need that, I would have never sent my son. If that's not how I work, but someone has to obey God. So do I have a choice? Yes. So now we can't then say, all God kept telling me was you have a choice not to do it, but you can't say it, it's not me. Pause. That's a say love. You can say you don't want to. You can say you chosen not to because he gives all of us a choice. Because what people do when they coach with us, well, my spouse has a choice. So do you. Hmm. We have a choice to obey or not. We have a choice to work hard or not. We have a choice to study to show ourselves approved or not. We got a choice to be a sacrificial lamb or not. We got a choice to, to, to submit or not. We got a choice to sanctify or not. Everybody has a choice. And we can choose no. And but we get mad when they choose no. Because I was mad, mad. You should choose to get delivered. You should choose to get right. You should choose to do what the Bible says. God's like, you're not choosing to do what I'm asking. So don't judge him. Work on you. And if you choose not to obey me, I'll give you that choice. God doesn't want you to go to hell, but he'll literally give you the choice to go to hell. God doesn't want you to disobey to disobey him, but he'll literally give you the choice to disobey him. So the goal is choose who you're going to serve and choose if you're going to obey. So I chose to obey God and it was hard. So God said, now work on getting stronger versus working on pointing out what he was doing wrong. Because pointing out what he was doing wrong, I got great at that. Real, real good. But someone has to agree to sacrifice and it is excruciatingly painful. It is embarrassing. It, it does take work. But unfortunately, I had grown up believing that anything that was that hard, that painful, that difficult was in God. And it was error. It was complete error. God said I could do it. God asked me to do it. Then there was a way. No way with the God we serve. Ask us to do something and not provide a way. It's just that I had to agree to the way and the way for me. 
And see, no one can. The thing about the way we do our ministry, you can't argue with our testimony. What God said for me was, you've got to learn to obey. You've got to learn spiritual warfare. you got to learn to be stronger. You've got to learn to be more disciplined in order to obey me. And I could get all of my work in that, regardless if he ever came back home. God never said my obedience was based on him coming home. My obedience was based on me obeying him. And he never said, you're, oh, you, you're obeying me if he gets saved. You're obeying me if he gets delivered. He said, love him. Learn to be strong enough to respond with a soft answer. Learn to be strong enough to love him unconditionally. Learn to be strong enough to respect, respect him because my word says so, not because he deserved it. All those things were between me and God. They weren't. However, they did help deliver him, but it was because I was obeying God. So somebody has to obey God. Someone has to obey God. So it doesn't mean because God said it, it was going to be, oh, no big deal. If God called me to be a doctor, let's say God called me to be a neurosurgeon. And God calls someone else to, I don't know, clean a window. The training, he doesn't love people differently, right? He doesn't love the person who's supposed to clean windows differently than a neurosurgeon. That's just God. He loves us all equally. But the training to clean a window well and what it would take to be, what it takes to be a neurosurgeon, the time, the effect, the money, the, the, the sleepless nights, the books, the the, the loans or the schooling and the internships, it's, it's like almost 15 years of training. That's literally after you've gone to school for 12 years. You do internships and fellowships and residencies and pay money and sleepless nights and it's excruciating. But if someone is called to do it, they've got to do the work to get it done. That's their assignment. If they choose to clean windows, is it easier? Absolutely. Does it make it right? If that's not your assignment, doesn't mean God doesn't love you, but you're still outside of his will. Just outside of his will. In the, in the midst of people, we always run into from conflict or situations because it's, it's easier to do that. Right. But God is intending for us to walk through this. It's like you used to Jesus walking with the cross yes. and, and being crucified. It was a walk that he had to go through. Yes. It was a process that he had to go through. And going through that process, the end results was your freedom. Yes. The end results is for you to have authority and power and dominion on this earth. The, 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 the reason he did it, he gave you the keys to the access to the throne room of God. He, get, he did all of that walk. But society and emotions and feelings make you not want to go through the conflict. Yes. Oh, I don't like pain. But what do you learn in pain? What, what's the consequences of going through pain? What's the consequences of going through? As a coach, we tell our athletes, they push through it. Yeah. Push through it because you, your, your body is telling you one thing. But, your, but if you push through that, there's a whole nother level of endurance that you reach. There's a whole nother level of strength that you reach. There's a whole, and I'm talking about physically and mentally because mm -hmm. you push yourself differently. And so you are name a pain, you are name a situation, and it doesn't matter what your situation may be. What is God teaching you in that situation? Wow. Or are you ignoring, ignoring what God is trying to say in the situation? Because if, when you start talking about your discipline, when you start talking about your obedience, when you start talking about it, are you listening to what God is saying? Because I say to myself now, now in this place now. now that I don't have a choice. I take my choices away because I had a I had a bend toward taking bad choices. Mm -hmm. And so I just take them away. I, me. This is me. Now, I don't know about you, 
But for me, I don't I don't look at the I can I can make a choice. It's going to be God or it's going to be God. If God said I can do it, I'm doing it. If God played this in front of me, I'm doing it. If it says it in the word, I'm doing it. All of that other stuff, I, I can't do because I had a bad habit. And that bad habit of making bad choices was going to drop me off in hell. Looking at that fire behind me, I didn't want to fall into fire. I didn't want to fall into hell. I didn't want to bust hell wide open. Knowing what I know. Mm. Knowing what I know. I was going to bust hell wide open. And now I'm in a place where I don't want to do what I'm doing and get before God. And he says, I, I never, get from before me. I never knew you. I don't even want that either. Right. So, so I don't, I'm, I'm looking at it's God's, whatever God is saying to do in the discipline, mm -hmm. whatever God is saying to do in, 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 in obedience, whatever it is, yeah. whatever it is, because every situation, every circumstances, we have to learn something. Yeah. We have to. That's that's life. That's life. That's what we do. So we can't, you know, and that was the one thing that I was using all the time. Well, I can't do this and this and this. No, 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 no. Here's the scripture that says that you, Gerald, you can do this. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Is Christ inside of you? Yes. Okay, then you need to stand up. Let's stand up. Let's get some boldness. Let's get some, start re repeating these scriptures. And so now repeating these scriptures and repeating things that, that are, gives me boldness, that gives me strength, that gives me encouragement, that gives me wisdom, that gives me understanding in a, in a hard time. Right. And we all have to all have to go through something. At some point in some time, what are we leaning on? Are we leaning, relying, and trusting in God, or are we leaning, relying, and trusting in ourselves? So we always get the, you know, it's it's hurting me, and I'm struggling. Um, and here's the situation: we don't try to tell someone what they're supposed to do, but we do remind people if God asks, right? So the first goal you have is to get healed enough to hear God's voice. Heal enough to hear God's voice. Because sometimes you're not hearing God because you're not healed. So you heal enough to hear God's voice and you obey God in everything you do know, right? We know a soft answer turns away wrath. We know you got to love unconditionally. We know you've got to forgive. You know, those are things that we already know. God does not say, if it's hard to forgive, you don't have to. That's not biblical. So because our, our culture says, well, you can forgive that because he, he is or she is remorseful. No, that's not how it works. No. So we got to work at that. Practice. I may not be able to forgive that quickly. Like let's say a murder or molestation. We've had to walk through that. He's had molestation in his childhood. So we literally had to walk through forgiving molesters because the forgiveness is for his freedom. It doesn't say, it doesn't mean the people that molested him were right. And it doesn't mean we're okay with it. We're not. It doesn't even mean that they have, are, re, are remorseful. It doesn't matter because the forgiveness of those people is for his freedom. So we had to walk through that. You think that's not hard? Hmm. Absolutely, it's, it's hard. Hmm. But so he's had to work that kind of hard and I had to work a different kind of hard. And all of it was necessary. But watching my hard watching my journey that was very challenging helped him with his journey that was challenging because like okay if you can forgive me then surely i can forgive the molester and now we are operating in deliverance we get to be delivered because we're willing to do what god said so if something is hard that does not mean we say okay god since it's difficult since my mind aches, my heart aches, my bank account is empty, my kids are suffering. All those things are terrible and we did and we went through it. All of those things literally for years. But the goal is, okay God, if you're asking me to do this, there's a way. Show me the way. Show me the way so I don't pull my hair out. 
Show me the way so I don't commit murder. Show me the way so I don't, I don't go to sleep in agony. Literally, my situation didn't change. I did. Say that again. My situation didn't change. I did. I learned to pull down the stronghold because it was a stronghold. I learned to pull down shame. I learned to cancel the, the mental anguish of not knowing if he was alive or dead, not knowing if I was going to have enough to, to take care of my kids, not knowing if he would ever return, uh, not, not wanting him to return and knowing God wanted him to return. All of those things are excruciating in terms of my mind, in terms of my emotion, while I'm still raising children, while I'm still a community leader, while I'm still a kingdom leader, while I'm doing these other things, I get it horrible horrible and i still can make a choice to obey god because if god's asking he's also providing i can't just say that with all oh, money's coming god's if god said it i believe it you know if I, if god told me i was going to live in a mansion and it took 20 years to get there because I live in a small house and I fix my credit and I get a good job and I make some money. And then finally, 20 years later, woo, my dream house, we made it through. Why couldn't I do 20 years of making sure my husband was delivered? Just a little bit at a time, growing and increasing and seeing God move a little bit and sewing over here and, 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 and having an apartment and then having a small place and then having a bigger place and then having a small house and then having a bigger house and a equity. We, we, we take long journeys for all kinds of things, long journeys for all kinds of things. But I, I didn't want to do a long journey for his deliverance. I wanted it to be quick, but something that, that of that magnitude, what he was dealing with, it was going to take a long time. And one thing that happened with us and many of you who follow us know it. I realized if I didn't put the work in for him and the bloodline, my children would still have to deal with it. If I didn't deal with it with him, I was still going to deal with it with my children. Whatever I don't break off the bloodline, whatever I don't work to, to put at bay, whatever I don't cancel off the bloodline, whatever we're not understanding, my children are still going to deal with those very things. So I still need to learn. I still need to fight. I still need to pull down. And I don't fight from a place of defeat. I'm not talking about always feeling like, oh, I got to be in a war. No, I'm going to annihilate the devil but I don't have to be in pain. I learned how to go to God with pain. You got this, so I don't have to. You got this, so I don't have to. So therefore, I can give anything I have to him because I, I have authority. If I can't take care, take authority over my own emotions, I surely can't take authority over anything happening to him. I don't have enough power. So I got to learn, had to learn how to take authority over things, whether we were separated or not. I still had to learn how to take authority over the things he was dealing with. And what happened was because I got stronger when I had any, because at first we had no communication, but then when we started having even simple communication, our goal, my goal at that point wasn't, oh, get him home or keep him from taking me to divorce court. That wasn't the goal because that wasn't what God told me to do. He said, uh, when he does call, now that was months from the time he said it, you need to have forgiveness in your heart because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks and he'll be able to feel the forgiveness. He'll be able to hear the respect in your voice, just a conversation. He'll literally hear the love. He'll hear the heart. If your heart is hard, he'll hear it. If your heart is soft, he'll hear it. And I had to put a ton of work in because my heart had gotten hard. So he said, when he calls or when I send him there, make this house an environment for deliverance and your voice an instrument of deliverance. My house had to be an atmosphere of deliverance 
and my voice had to be an instrument of deliverance. And that takes a ton of work and a ton of time, but it's not impossible. Again, the neurosurgeon, how do people become a brain surgeon? Like those tiny new, like nerves and how do you even begin to, oh, it takes a specialty. It takes teaching. It takes watching other people. It takes making some mistakes and then getting themselves back up, all of it. So my voice could literally begin to deliver, but I also had to realize it didn't be, it didn't deliver quickly. I believe you were open to deliverance, but it wasn't deliverance. But you, you, but that's on you. I right? mean, it, it was a process, right? It, it was a, it was a, a good process because I can hear difference in the past and then in what was new. Right. You know, and so I can tell when you was working, when you was working hard on the response, how right. to respond to me, how to talk to me. How, it, 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 that was the, the guard letting down. And now I'm able to receive and hear what is being said because of so much of the arguments and the, mm. and the, and the strife and all of that stuff. The, the vocabulary was different. The okay. home life was different. And coming into it, you can tell the difference from the first time mm -hmm. to the third time. You know what I'm first saying? First separation. First separation yep. Yep. to the third separation. Yep. There was a there was a growth period in you. There was a a, a, a new level of, I mean, like unconditional love. If, right. If that I could say that. I think unconditional love is contagious. That's why God asked for it. But you can. And you can, and you, you know, when it's genuine, when you've been with a person, you know, when it's genuine. And I was, wasn't, I wasn't totally delivered. So mm -hmm. I was doing things to see if it was real, oh, like, yeah. like antagonizing it to see if it was going to be real. Are you going to really love me through this? But that was what I knew God, who God was. Yeah. And my one thing that I've always said, I'm like, this woman is like going to walk out the Bible. You're going to be truly a living epistle. You, you, the one thing I, I keep coming back to, and I just remember when I came back that third time, mm -hmm. that, um, um, that soda in the refrigerator. <laughs> I'm like, we don't even drink soda. But because I was out and I was away and I was away from home, I was drinking this soda. And I come back and I look in the refrigerator and it's this soda in there that I had. And I was like, we don't even drink soda. Why is this soda in here? And she said, Holy Spirit told her to get this soda. She don't drink soda. Nobody in our house drinks soda. And I was drinking it. And I was like, but it was a place where it was making me comfortable to be back home. The yeah. environment, the smell, the 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 house, the way it was looking, it just looked different because she was different and she was doing something different. And it made me sit back and look at, like, I can take a deep breath and be like, okay, let's do this process. So that that's why, why I share, that wasn't deliverance. That was, I'm willing to be in the environment yeah to begin the deliverance process. Many of us never see deliverance in our spouse because they never get close enough to the Jesus in us. We, we bring the deliverance by bringing Jesus. When the Bible right. says that a spouse can be won over without words, we're winning them over, but the process of deliverance couldn't even begin. Like he didn't get to be prayed for by me. He didn't get to be laid hands on by me. He did though. If I can't keep him having a simple conversation, because we couldn't even have a simple conversation at all. We could start with two, once we got to word ten. We're either yet yeah, it barely. Boy, like five. five. <laughs> yeah, probably. We we somebody's voice is raised. Someone's accusing someone. Then I used to um throw things out. You you, you are you drunk? You're high? You who you been with? Where you been? I know good and well 
he don't want to talk about that. Well, where I don't think you, I, you, oh, you calling me now. You got the wrong phone number, which, which, what, all of that. Of course, I'm antagonizing. I, I don't want to hear that crap. I just here to get the, but it was horrible. So how can I bring Christ to him if I can't even have a simple conversation? So when we talk about helping someone get deliverance, can you just help them have a conversation? We we want to we want to go to let me lay hands on and cast out devils. Well, the devil needed to be casted out of me because if I can't have common communication with a person where the love of Christ takes over, I need deliverance. You know, uh, communication needs deliverance from broken communication, okay. dysfunctional communication. That's demonic. It's hatred. It, it, it basically is, and it's offense. And it's anger, it's wrath. All of those things break up the line of communication. How can two walk to love, uh, together unless they agree? And so what's agreement? You having to be able to talk about something. And if you can't talk about, and that's the one thing the enemy has been trying to use, has been using a little bit successfully, breaking up lines of communication right. with, with, with um, um, in families and marriages. That part. When you can't have a conversation, yes, like we just said, we couldn't even get to five, five words, and 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 it and it goes to it blows up, and now nobody's talking, everybody's mad, yeah, and or now arguing. Or, or or arguing, and now it's just a toxic environment. The environment is not conducive to deliverance. The 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 is is conducive to somebody want to get up out of there. Yeah, because. I just thought about something. When I was at my most bitter state, the the key, somebody don't, don't put it in the comments, but just his key in the door hardened me. Ugh, there he is. Just his, seeing his name on my phone made me angry. So I would hear him open the door and now I'm already mad. Hold up. You was mad at my, my name on the phone? Why? I don't want to talk to you. I, what you want? What do you want? What I needed some money. Me for? Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the devil. The devil is a liar. I'm not answering. Can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> what you going to use it for? Where you going? <laughs> Jesus. You want more oh, money? You just God. took money. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm oh, over here raising your kids, Jesus. paying the bills. Trying to be forgiven. I don't even want to answer the phone because you're going to say something crazy. You might be high. I, where are you? Ain't, don't worry about all that. I'm grown. No, I'm worried. No, I am worried. <laughs> I'm worried about where you are and where you're calling for me to do something. The door open. You got, I need to, I need, I need to get some gas. My, huh. So you already, when people say, how do you help somebody get deliverance? So if I'm answering the phone and I'm angry, mm -hmm. or, I'm or he comes in the house and I'm furious, my goal is, can I get deliverance from being angry? I can't let the sun go down in my wrath. I can't respond in anger because I should be able to give a soft answer. So my first goal was, okay, let me get myself together so I can give a soft answer. Let me be able to pick up the phone. Hello. I, I made a change. When I picked up the phone and I could say hello instead of what do you want? <laughs> that's a whole. I, I was showing my deliverance right there. Hold on. When, when, when I came home the last time and I said, I called you and I said, um, I want to come home. And you had this soft voice. The door is open. I said the in, back door is unlocked. In, in my mind, she's the person that hates the door being unlocked. And I used to leave it open and unlocked all the time. And she hated it. It was one of those things that literally drove her to going off on me. And for her to tell me that the back door was open for me to come home. Oh, I know that was God. Oh, yep. I knew that. I knew something was up then. Right. I said, okay, God, what is, what is going on? What is going on <laughs> that she, she will leave the back door open. Yeah. Like, you because set me up? that morning, I walked by the back door and God said, unlock it. <laughs> unlock it. 
I'm like, I'm getting good to go to work <laughs> and nobody's going to be here. What God what's up. But see, that took however many years to not be angry, yeah. to hear God's voice. Cause I couldn't hear God's voice concerning you to He's going to, he's going to, he's going to need it open. When he called, I was like, the back door is open. It's no problem. Just go in and go have a seat. What you, what you need is in the, lay down, get some sleep. <laughs> what you need is in the refrigerator. Your clothes are in the right spot. Now, that wasn't happening before. Why would I be that accommodating? No, I could only be that accommodating because I got deliverance, not because I wanted my marriage. Go no on. way. No way. Just wanting your marriage will not get you to that level of strength. Only wanting to obey God can get you to that level of strength. See, that, say that again. Come on now. Because I teach think people that just teach hold that on to, I just want my marriage. Oh, no, ma I, well, no marriage I've ever met. It, you, that, that level of strength doesn't come from one of your marriage. A level of strength comes from supernaturally God saying, do this. Don't do that. Say this. Don't say that. Pull this down. Cancel that. Bind this. You know, annihilate that. I was had to do all of that. Now, I had to pray all the way home. I'm canceling demonic assignments. I'm shutting down mental illness. I'm cutting down on how I used to respond. I'm doing all of that. I'm canceling all of that. And while I'm canceling all of that, then I'm headed home to stand in for the Lord. So God, what is this going to look like? We haven't been around each other. Now, what we had been around each other is we we're around each other and he would leave again. So now I got to pull down disappointment. He said, don't you, don't you get your hopes up and don't, and don't expect, don't have any expectations. Cause if you go in there with expectations, you're going to want him to be remorseful. And he wasn't. You're going to want him to be nice to you, and he wasn't. You're going to want him to tell you where he's been, and he didn't. So because God had already been delivering me, I could go to him and say, all right, I'm just going to do what God is asking me to do. And then I get in the shower and pray, go to my car and pray to get enough strength to stand there and obey God not try to get my husband back. So my example of all of those things, when he was ready, can I say that part again? When he was ready, ready meant, I got to see if this is real. I got to see if this is going to last. I got to see if tomorrow we're going to talk about the same stuff. When he was ready, he had an example of how do you pull down? How'd you just do that when I know how you feel? How'd you just say it like that? How'd you just respond? So how, what scripture did you pray? Now we're agreeing on a whole process that I had learned. Now he didn't have to, I had all the books. I had memorized all the scriptures. I had written down something. I could literally hand it over to him. And then his deliverance went so much faster because I had put in the work. Now, remember we're one in the spirit. So if I'm declaring something, it's on him. If I'm decreeing something, it's on him. I literally sanctified him through my scriptures, through my learning, through my decreeing, through my fasting. I sanctified him. So as soon as he was ready, his deliverance moved faster, but it wasn't fast because it was a lot to do. Because it was so much. Because it was so much going on. And do we have people that are married to somebody with mental illness? Yes. Do we have people who are married to people who are drugged? Drug addicts, drug dealers, yes. Do we have people who are dealing with alcoholics? Yes. Do you think God doesn't love them? Do you think God doesn't care that they need deliverance? Do you think God wants to throw them away? If it was your child, would you throw them away? If it was your child, would you not want them to have help? If it was your child, would you not go to the ends of the earth to make sure they come out? Oh yeah. God was like, Oh, that's my son. Now, if you don't want to help me, no problem, but don't, don't, don't think I don't want him delivered. Don't think I don't want him saved. Don't think I don't, I'm, I'm not going to do whatever it takes to see him delivered. Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it.
I'm going to ask every person I can possibly ask until someone says yes, because that's my son. Because he has an assignment in the earth. Because people are counting on him. Because there are men who need who he is. Because there's a ministry locked up on the inside of him. There are people waiting for him to lay hands on them because he has a, a ministry of healing. All that is necessary. So we got to get this thing down. And it took years. That doesn't mean it one God. It took a long time. That doesn't mean it one God. I didn't like it. That doesn't mean it one God. I didn't want to do it most of the time. That doesn't mean it one God. So the unpopular statement is when we try to say, because this hurts my feelings, it, I don't want to do it. Okay, don't do it, but don't say it's not God because it can be. Yeah, but we re always relate situations and pain and hurt to saying that it's not God. But what did Jesus do? And I mean, the, the pain the, that he had to go through. Right. I mean, lit look, think about the pain. When you just think about Jesus on the cross, when you think about Jesus walking with the cross, when you think about that, Let's just let's just think about that and compare that to your pain. It's not comparable. Compare it to your pain. It was. And he did it for people he did, didn't didn't like him and he didn't know. It, it's not comparable. And the, the other thing is the Bible says mm -hmm. Jesus learned obedience by the, by the things, things he suffered. suffered. So no wonder we we are struggling with people. All of us. I'm not I'm not saying I got it because God asked me to do stuff and I will be like, oh Jesus. You want me to do what? Whew. Okay. I got it. Literally, less than a week ago, I lost my dad. Less than a week ago. And God was like, I gave you three days with him. I need you to pull yourself together. You have an assignment. You have an assignment. Don't be distracted. Because that's what the devil wants. No, you're not going anywhere. Stay standing where you are. Let's keep moving. The devil will not have your mind. Will not have your mind. Won't come after your heart. I get my moments and I pull myself out of it. Not because I don't feel, but because I know how to pull down strongholds. Come on. You know where I learned how to pull down heartache? <laughs> Daily. Da minute by minute. So you can have the greatest heartache and still be able to move in God. I'm not saying it's a problem for people to have pain. I, what I'm saying is it doesn't change God's instructions because instantly we're like, okay, we're about to do that. We went into... What's normal? I'm about to do this. I'm about to do that. I said, okay, do this, do that. And I stopped and I said, hold on, hold on. I got here. What does God want me to do? Stand firm, stand guard. Don't be distracted. We literally have a conference in a week and God is like too much to be done. You can't do anything over there. Stay. Seek first kingdom. Now, I'm not saying there won't be a time where God will say, don't do that. Go over that. Kingdom is God's will. Whatever it is he asks you to do. But I obeyed him two weeks ago when he sent me home. My dad wasn't even sick. He sent me home for three days and I had the most amazing three days with him while he was up not sick and he literally passed away 10 days later but he gave me those three days now had i not obeyed him then i might have thrown things off but i did so he kept saying i gave you those three days i gave you those three days rest in me heal in me give the pain to me so every time i get it i can pull on my husband Thank God. I go to him. I'm I literally dealing with all of that. We're still dealing with stuff. But I'm still able to, to do what God has asked me to do. 
Now, I'm not speaking negatively against somebody who needs more time. I'm saying this can be what God is asking of people. And if you're not strong enough to do it, you've got to get strong enough. So I tell people in the Help Me Army who constantly quit, I'm like, you're not strong enough. Don't stop until you're strong enough to do what God said do. Don't stop. I'm not strong enough yet to do all the things God has called me to do yet. So I still keep learning, keep pushing, keep reading, keep studying. I'm submitted to to two leaders. Like I still have some some major assignments that aren't done. I got to keep going. I have to keep going because we've got things to do. And God's people, God's will is counting on us to do it. And when we don't, other people suffer. It, it's, it, it's just reality. It's, and we're not pointing fingers at anybody, but it's the reality. The people we were supposed to help while we were a mess, we have to apologize for that. We have to ask for forgiveness for all that we missed on the, at that time. Anytime we're not where we're supposed to be, we have to, we, you know, we, we ask for forgiveness. Anytime we say something, we shouldn't say we, we do something we shouldn't do. We're very transparent. We're like, Ooh, we miss, we miss God. Of course, we're going to make mistakes for human. And then we look at it and, and I'm, I, I appreciate we can put something on the table and go, man, we missed it. Lord, we ask for forgiveness if we've hindered anybody, if we missed something, if somebody was mishandled because of that, because we're not perfect. And then we go, let's get up. We can be con we can be corrected, but we will not be condemned. We made a mistake. We ask God to forgive us now. Let's learn from it and move forward. That part. And we can do that in marriage, too. Because if you can't do it in marriage, do can you really do it in ministry? Can you really do it? And give God glory. I, I'm I, I'm learning. I had and trust me, it was so many years. I was like, I'm not doing it. And God was like, okay. Because He's not gonna make you do he anything. He didn't make me do it. He is not My gonna make you. God. He just desires for us to make the right choice. Think about your children. Yeah. You desire for your children to make the right choice. You give them the tools that they need. You give them the information they did. They need. You give them everything that they need. God has given us everything that we need to make right decisions. Yeah. Everything. He He's given His Son. Yep. He's He's given you a gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow. He's given us everything that we can possibly have to make the right decision. But because our our human nature takes over when we get we get into our emotions and our we can tell what outweighs what yeah because when we can choose not to do something that god is saying then opposite that it has to be the opposite so it has to be your flesh or it has to be you listening to the the enemy or whatever it may be if it ain't uh, god then what is it? what is it well that's good you have to make a decision yeah which one are you who are you going to serve it's like blessings and curses it's yep. life or death there's no there's no gray area it's you're going to have to choose which side you want to be on. If it's going to be God, then let it be God. Yeah. If it's going to be the other side, then you're going to be on the other side. And it is what it choice. is. But you that's have to choice. make this choice. And God is desiring for you to make the right decision to be closer to him, to pursue him, to be in alignment with him, to understand him, to obey him. That's 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 what he created us to do. That's what he created us to be, not, yeah. not to choose to do the opposite. So you think about always go back to your kids because it's the, it's the example. What are we, what, why do our children choose to do the opposite thing? They, they can make a choice. Yeah. You gave them everything that they need. You, you've loved them. You've done all of these things, but they still get to make a choice. Right. But as you train them up, if you've given them everything that they need, at some point in some time, they'll come back. Yes. I came back. Amen. Thank I came you, back. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But our, our situation took a lot, a lot of years. And then even after we reconciled, took a lot of years for the deliverance process. 
Um, you don't just get off alcohol, drugs, battle depression, no. come off depression medicine, come out of suicide yeah. and pornography. That. And you don't just come out of that quickly. But I mean, God can perform a miracle, but we just didn't, we weren't part, we, we weren't in the miracle line. And, and I used to ask God that all the time, but it was a, it was always, there's a process. And I, now I see why it was a process because I'm introduced to people that are going through that and, you got and they need to have help, a process yeah. to get through it. And, you, and you're and you able to help yeah, them. Yeah, and, and if he did something easy for me or just took it away, then I wouldn't have any any respect for it or or value the, the work ethic because I didn't have or, a work ethic. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it had, I had to develop a work ethic yes, and, a, and a desire and a fire and a push to, to not only get delivered, but to stay, stay delivered. delivered. That was the, yeah. that, this is the fight. Oh, oh Jesus. It's to stay delivered yeah. because I do understand that those things are right outside my door, waiting for opportune times to come back into the house that they call themselves, that they call home. Mm -hmm. So I got to stay fortified. I have to stay, I have to stay prayed up. I have to stay built up within the word that, that, that they can't find a place in me. Right. There's, there, there's no place for them in me. And then, and then <clears throat> I've got to make sure that I'm covering so that he has agreement. Mm -hmm. There's power in that agreement. Yeah, and so if I didn't learn, I wouldn't be able to help. I wouldn't be able to help. So today's was not so much because what people want to do is, well, tell me how to do this and then tell me how to do that. Great. Once you understand and believe it's possible and put yourself in position, then you learn or while you're doing that, you got to learn. Yeah, you got to learn how to pull down strongholds. You have to learn how to cast out devils. You have to learn how to come after things and no spiritual warfare. Your your study has to match your war. Your, your understanding of demons has to match your bloodline. If you got a bunch of stuff in your bloodline, Mary had a little lamb and now I lay me down to sleep, that's not going to get it. Not for the bloodline we were dealing with. Oh, no. Just, to, oh, let me read a couple of things or say amen in church. That wasn't enough to, to come after the demons we, we <laughs> in, the fam, in the family line we deal with. That's not enough. And so someone was, I, I, I require memorization of scripture. Like, let me hear the scriptures. Oh, I don't know. I don't know scriptures. Then learn. <laughs> I don't have a memorized. Then memorize them. This stuff, like, this this, stuff is life and death. You don't have a choice. If, if you... If you don't know how see, to do that, it, then see, do it. But see, there's the there what you just said. Because people choose uh, the opposite choice. If your life depend on it, what would you do? And most of the time, people's lives do depend on it, and they don't know enough. If the sword of the spirit is a scripture, the Bible, the sword, and you have this need for a very large, very strong, very sharp sword. But you got a plastic sword because you don't know enough word. You can't speak it. You don't know what is written. You're not going to win the fight you're in. You got your weapon has to match your war. And my weapon didn't match my war. I didn't understand. I didn't know enough. I hadn't learned enough. I hadn't gotten strong enough. So the goal was, while I was learning to be a helpmate, I had to learn how to war differently. Then you got to learn how to remain, uh, you know, in the offense and truly use the word for what it was meant for, for what it was meant for. So it's about the, asking God what he needs from us and stop saying it's not possible because that, that's lack of belief. So this one... I guess was more about, do you really believe? Do you really believe? Because if you don't believe, that's where you start. You got to believe God for your your spouse's deliverance. Then you can help the spouse with deliverance. But if you don't know how to deliver even your own feelings, your own mind, your own thoughts, how are you going to cast out devils out of your spouse? Yeah, the deliverance process starts with you. With us. It starts yeah, with, inside. Start inside. You, you, you person, you have to find making sure that you have 
allow God to evaluate and show you you. If it, yeah. like you say, discipline, faith, fear, anger, whatever it may be that you dealing with that you suppress because our eyes are so much on the other person that you kind of ignore what you're going through, Absolutely. ignore, you know, what you're going through, you say, because of that person. But some of this stuff has been happening to you as a kid. It right. just happened, happened to grow up with you. And now you can't even identify because it's part of your character or your personality. Right. And But God is really trying to have to evaluate and search you so that when 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 you do help for the deliverance process, that stuff don't get to you. It don't yeah. attach itself to you. You, yeah. you, you find like you said, you, you had to get to get yourself delivered and then get enough word and start searching word, searching scriptures and, and do and filling yourself up. So when it's time to be able to look at this situation and like, OK, I see that I'm not fighting against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. I'm fighting against these principalities. I'm fighting against ruling spirits. I'm fighting against these things that that are their high, high ranking demons. These ain't little ranking demons, these high ranking demons. And I got to understand what I'm dealing with. This stuff yeah. is generational. This is bloodline stuff. So I'm just not going to, like you say, I'm not, I can't go in there with the, you know, Mary had a little lamb, that stuff. I got to come in there with a hit shot out of Boko. I got to come in there with something different. And so I thank you for your discipline. I thank you for the work that you put in and, and the desire that you have for God and the, and the, the, the change of heart and mind mm -hmm to allow God to strengthen you and, and work in you and work through you to be able to assist and to help me walk this thing out. Because it wasn't, it, it was a, I know it wasn't easy for you. Right. I know it wasn't easy because it, when you look in that something and it doesn't look like what God is saying at all, it doesn't look like it. And so it, it, it's almost frustrating, but mm -hmm. God is like, I just need you to believe. I just need you to have faith in me. I just need you to trust in me. And you, you know, it took you a minute to do it. A but long, when you did it, a long time. when you, when you actually went through the process and still working on it, still right. going through, right. still doing it because there's, there's a new level to it. And then there's triggers and then there's things that, All you, of that. you, then there's, Things yeah. that the devil tries to use memory recall. There's all kinds of things. This doesn't just go, oh, this goes away. No, you just learn how to live. You live righteously. You live God. You live with authority. You live with power. This is all about us living this way. So it's, it's, it's got to be a lifestyle. It's got to be something we do all the time. It can't be something we pick up and drop off. And I had to learn how to be righteous, which meant me learning how to be a helpmeet. And because of that, God gave me the understanding of why he was asking me to do what he's asking me to do. Amen. So believe in God for your spouse's deliverance really starts with you. And then once you get that underway, you'll start to study. Now, I will tell, we tell everybody, whatever it is that you have to learn, God's got a plan for you. He'll tell you where to go to get certain things. He'll tell you who to study under. He'll tell he he will guide and direct you. And then it's up to us because he can guide you to a book and you cannot buy it. Mm -hmm. He can guide you to a book and you can buy it and you not read, read it. it. <laughs> he can guide you to a book. You read it and don't take any notes and don't understand. So we can't then say, oh, I can't do it. No, you can. You just chose to not do the process that's required. And, and he make is we get people all the time. I, God told me to, to, to submit and join the army and learn spiritual warfare. They stay a couple months like, this is hard. I don't like it. It hurts too much. It hurts because you haven't learned how to pull down pain. Yeah. You haven't learned how to pull down unforgiveness. You haven't yeah. learned how to pull down unconditional, I mean, conditional love. It, this is part of the process. It's a spiritual workout. It's a whole. It's war. a spiritual, it, yeah. But you, th whole, th you think about when you start war. exercising right. and you start getting in shape. My God, you know the the first I couple of days know. it make it's so hard because your body is starting to feel the effect of it. It's hard, it, period. Right. But once you get into it and it becomes your lifestyle, it's not that anymore. Well, it isn't to me. I hate it, but you still got to work in. <laughs> it's not. And I she don't do like it every day. Right. If you did hard. it every, if, but if you did it every day, 
Yes. It wouldn't it wouldn't be as hard. Right. Right. So right. it's not like you It's definitely not as hard. That don't mean you like it. No, you're not the, gonna like it. The the the, the, Does that the mean? war doesn't mean you like it either. It's just you do it and you do it consistently. So the that's what I'm saying. It's not, it isn't that it's gonna necessarily be that you enjoy it or like it. You're just gonna do it. You're just gonna keep doing it. And then when you fall, you get back up. Yeah. You get back up and you go, all right, didn't make it. Bam, I'm on it. I'm on it. Woo! Amen. We're going to be on it. All right. So that's our, you know, believe in God for your spouse's deliverance. Do you know enough? Exactly. Do you believe enough? When you believe, start learning. While you're believing, learn for yourself. Then you can learn for your spouse. We offer mentoring, but uh, wherever God tells you to go, because it might not be with us. He may lead you somewhere else. Just open we're yourself we're up. Acquired taste. Uh, especially me. She's an acquired taste. Because I because I know what it takes. Oh, so so not pushing people to what it takes yeah. isn't helping them. At that point, you just wasted your money. Don't do that. Don't bother. Yeah. Don't bother. It's yeah. not worth it. Yeah. I don't, I'm not doing that for that. Don't keep it. It don't worry about it. Like literally, people just sell. Blah, blah. You feel that way because you didn't, you didn't do the work. Like you didn't. Okay, I can't do it. It's too hard. Ah, uh, yeah, I agree. At the level you're at, it's too hard. But the level I can take you, it's not. <laughs> but then I got people that put the work in, and my God, they are growing, learning, strengthening. They got this thing. Doesn't make it easy. Jesus, it's not easy, but I'm all about it. I'm all, I, I'm, you will not outwork me. Now you can try to get toe to toe with me, but I'll help you to the end. My mentees know I'm going, I'm going in with you. I'm going with you, but you don't let me look back at, for your own deliverance and your own marriage and your own bloodline. You're not going to work as hard as me. Lord have mercy. Come on now. We can do better than that. We can do better than that. Jesus. So that is today. Wasn't that good? Wasn't that good? It's not easy, but it is so worth it. Y'all better tell them it's worth it. I mean, worth it. Amen. Amen. And I love it. I'm an acquired taste. People don't want to, like, I've had people say, God told me, but I'm scared of you. What? If you're scared of me, what the heck is happening when the devil comes? <laughs> Lord have mercy. You're intimidated by me? Lord, the devil's running all over you. Mm -hmm. Jesus. That's you worried about me because I'm going to expect you to wake up at midnight and pray or speak or do what? Lord have mercy. What's the demon doing in your house? If I scare you. That's funny. I work people hard, but I love them hard. I say that all the time. I have to remind them I do love them. I do. I love hard. You don't think so? Oh, you do. I love hard. I, I love my mentees so hard. But, but because of just, that... It, it, it just seems, it, you know, I bet some of them just feel like because you're so hard and you demand so much because you know what it takes. I know what it you takes. You know what it takes and you know that they have the potential to reach the fullness of what God sent them to you for. God just doesn't talk and send people yeah. to us for no reason. That's it. If you say God said I'm supposed to be here, God sent you here for a reason. Yes. It was not. Listen, we, he knows we're not in the business of just taking people. It's not even that. It, this is really and truly a battleground. This is this is training. This is you go through a basic training. You go through an intense train. As you go through the army, the levels get hard. They get you get because you understand the basic level. Then there's the next level, and then there's the next level. It's just like elementary, middle school, high school, college. 
you always have to grow and it's, it gets a little harder, but the reward of it is greater. The reward yeah. of it is greater and I because your, your, your spiritual muscles get stronger. stronger and yeah. because you are a person, you know, never been in, in never been in the military, but under, understanding the discipline that it takes yeah. for this fight. This is, this is a battle. This is not and a patty cake thing. This ain't the playground. I believe that they can do it too. And I get yes. that's that's me. I like don't I'm telling you, believe you in them. I believe in the God. Come on. Like now. I believe in what the word says. Like I believe it. So like you if you do don't believe it, like I'm things. like, oh no, we can do this. Oh no, the devil can't do that. Like I believe it for them. And then it it does frustrate me when they don't believe it for themselves, but I'm 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 right here. So sometimes people come back, like, well. Let me get back, cause it's, it's hard out here. The devil beat me up. <laughs> God, uh, you can God. give up on the training. You, you, the the bloodline hindrances don't go away. They just don't go away. So I'm not even saying just me. Wherever you train, wherever you study, wherever God sends you, it has to be a consistency and a a, a a tenacity. So I don't want to say it just like for our training. Please, wherever God Fine, sends sir. you. Find where you're supposed to train and learn and be consistent because the word is true. That was our focus this this um, this week was God's word is true and we're going to stand on it. We're going to believe in it. We're going to we're going to have knowledge of the word so we can say it is written and command the word to come to pass. Amen. Amen. And I was saying that when God speaks to you and sends you to us. Mm -hmm. It's a reason. Now, if he ain't sending you here, you 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 have your choice. Oh, but, but if he sends you, but if uh, God is is you heard God say, go go join the such and such, our armies, uh, join the armies. If God telling you to do that, then he he has a purpose. And then we he can't blame purpose. God if some things haven't come to pass, and He told you what to do. We can't blame God because God is like. For what I've asked, I know what you need to do. It's sort of like I used to be a college counselor and people would walk in. I want to do this. And then I would say, OK, here is the GPA. Here are the courses. Here. I, I don't I don't want to take that's going to take that long, that many classes. I got to apply. Yeah, yeah. You do, and they won't take a lower GPA than this. So we got to do this and this to get your GPA. Oh, I don't want to. I got to take math to do this. Yes, it's required for. Co so it's the same mentality for me. Like I literally used to do the same thing in, in college counseling because people would walk in and say, I want to do this and be all oh, I don't want it. Well, then you don't want to be a teacher then. I do. You don't want to be a nurse. You don't, you don't, because this is how you get there. It is what it, oh, they only have this and they only can do that. Yes. And here we go. I'll give you a plan. We just got to activate the plan. And then let's do it. But unfortunately, a lot of times people say they want to do it and they just don't. So it's the same thing. Don't get mad at God. Well, oh, this hurts and I can't do it. And I don't know how. And it, Ask God how. Ask God where. Ask God what. And then do it. It's required because it's required. That's it. I think we're good. We did good today. And nobody was real. And nobody was disrespectful. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all well, are me, learning. You did a dissertation. But some people weren't all when I did it. Oh. They, did they caught you in the spirit. Caught me in the spirit. Don't be disrespectful to a spouse. You be good. But amen. Okay. We ready? Mm -hmm. So now we need the music notes. You, don't you have an announcement? Here's an announcement. <laughs> you have one week to get to the conference. <laughs> it would a week from today. We are gonna convene in Atlanta, Georgia. If you're watching this live, you got six days to get there. And uh, do not limit God. Uh, you can decide today. We have heard God and gotten on planes and mm. moved stuff around and changed our everything to get to someplace God said to get to. So don't limit God. Don't miss out. 
Make sure you register. Um, and well, you can sew for somebody. And evenings are free, mm -hmm. so you can watch on the evening. Um, you can sew into the conference. There's so many things you could do. So go to our website if you want to sew. If you just want to respond to this word, that's 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 a big deal. Well, I've learned how to sew and people get frustrated. I'm like, what you mad for? That's the way God brings a harvest. So <laughs> that's just the way it works. So there are times when God has told you to sew. There are times when God's told you to learn. There are times God tell you get in certain environments, go to see certain speakers, sign up for certain things. People just have to learn how to obey. There are all kinds of different instructions at different times. What? I just thought about that. And you're just going to do that and not tell the rest of us? Oh, okay. Amen. <laughs> just, it was just a thought. It's just a thought. Okay. So um, next Friday is our conference. If you're watching this on replay, check our website for where we're going to be next. Because you never know. We're all over the country. And hopefully soon we'll be all over the world. My God. The God is expanding some things. So we will. Uh, let's see what we want to do. Come and join us for Divine Order Conference, October the 27th, 28th, and 29th in Atlanta, Georgia. Whether you're married or single, you need divine order in this season between marriage, ministry, and marketplace. I'm really excited about our speakers, Apostle Melvin Thompson, Pastor Samuel Giles, and Ambassador Sophia Ruffin Wilson. It's going to be dynamic. Evenings are free, but we want you to register to enjoy the entire experience. Go to GeraldAndYvette.com. So we will see those who have um, registered. We will see you all next week. Tune in, tune in, tune in. Did you put this on your page? Did you like it? Did you share it? This helps us grow Did with the subscribe? ministry. Did you subscribe to our YouTube channel? I believe most of you are subscribers. But did you subscribe to our YouTube channel? Go ahead and do that. If this is your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. So now we can do the music notes so we can we can finish off, finish off. This was a long one. Maybe you're tired. I'm sorry. I'm just getting started. Yeah. <laughs> music notes. I sure won't get no ice cream today. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me you got it upstairs. <laughs> I can't have any ice cream today. Mm -hmm. I might have some fruits and vegetables. Get some fruit. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! Music notes. Oh, oh, we gotta, we gotta figure out a way to do that. <laughs> Becca said, "Oh man, no, no, no. What you? I can have some hummus." Yep. What you call that stuff? Hummus. Uh, what's, what's the milk? Cashew milk. Yeah, you got some cashew milk. Y'all, I tried to freeze the cashew milk. That didn't work out. Yeah, that didn't work out. That was that was not the move. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I don't need to pray that your husband come home. I need to pray that you don't give up. You must be new. Pray that you don't give up. You don't pray for somebody else. You pray for yourself. How was the cashew? Um, see you next Friday. How was the cashew? The cashew milk was good. We made cashew milk, but we froze it. It don't taste good. It didn't taste good. The, the texture wasn't. It didn't do anything for me. Don't try to do it. That it was anything for me. All right. Yeah, they got music else. We're going to sing. Marriage works. If it work it. Say it again. Marriage works. If it work it. 
Marriage works if you work it. Marriage works if you work it. Marriage works if you work it. You say it again. Marriage works if you work it. Marriage works if you work it. Marriage works. If you work it, hey, all the way to the bay, bay, hey, to the bay, hey. Marriage work. Oh, and you work it. We got some coming. You right put here. the marriage to work. You put did, yourself to work. Did y'all like the intro? Did y'all see the intro? Did y'all get to see the intro? Let's, tell me y'all saw the intro. There's only a few people on, so it's 82 people on. Let me show y'all the it, intro. We were hurting, but God healed us. We were broken, but God saw fit to put us back together. Today, we're walking together in our purpose. And now we teach other couples how to do the same. I'm Gerald Benton. And I'm Yvette Benton. And, and this is Fiery Topics in Marriage. What do you think? Hey. Woo woo. Yeah, you like it? <laughs> God is doing it big, doing it big. We're preparing for some big things happening in the ministry. Y'all better hold on. God took a turn. Y'all better get it together. Next. <laughs> Amen. All right. Yes, we have that on the beginning of the um, intro, but some of y'all weren't on yet, so you didn't get to see it. So thanks for indulging us and checking it out. Amen. 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 You got to put the work in. You know, it's interesting that we'll pray that someone else put some work in, like get delivered, come home, stop doing this or stop doing that. But we'll, we won't pray that we learn how to do the things that God is asking us to do. That's not a balance. And next week, we're going to be talking about the balance. It's the divine order. Get your life in order. Like it's, imp it's imperative. Say so next week. Next week is our conference. Oh, I order. thought you was. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going next week. The whole, um, the whole conference is about divine order, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't say you look tired. Yet. You getting sleepy? He's sleepy, y'all. So we're gonna go. <laughs> look, I got stuff to make sure that I'm. All right. We will see y'all. Some of y'all will see you next Friday. We got people coming from Europe, people coming from Africa, people yeah, coming man. from South America, people coming from all over the U.S. We're so excited. We will see y'all next week. Yes, we will. Hold on. Why, baby? Oh, the people that are coming. You say you said next week. Right. Oh, you, when you say that, I'm my mind thinking you, that we going to see, how you going to see these people? Oh, well, next week they still will see us because we'll be online. Stream yard. Oh, ooh. We're gonna next Friday. Yeah, next, and Saturday. Oh, that's go so feel. And then next Saturday is us. Y'all better put your notifications on. Ooh. Get it, get it, get it. We get it, get it. Listen, y'all gonna that's want nasty. to be in the room. Get to the room. I'm talking about the impartation, the pour. That is going to be released. I, I can't even explain to you what it's going to be like in the room. And if you know someone in the Atlanta area, anyone, let them know. Send something to their inbox. You don't want to miss this. Just trust me. Just get there. Trust me. They can come evenings free. All right, you all. It's been amazing. amazing. We will see you all soon. Thank you, YouTube. YouTube's showing out. I just looked on the numbers. Like, YouTube had like 90 people. Facebook, eh, but YouTube, y'all did, did a good job. 
Great, great job. All right. So let people know who are let in the area. Evenings are free. We'll see you there. The information is on our website, GeraldAnnieFed.com. Dot com. See y'all later.